Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, January 23rd. It's cold here in southeastern Pennsylvania, as you might expect for January 23rd, so no complaints. Got a olive wood pipe today. This is uh, by my buddy Carl, olive wood piper, on YouTube and Instagram. We'll talk more about olive wood in a bit. Um, but uh, wonderful, wonderful pipe. Really loves Burley, and I am smoking Haunted Bookshop this morning. Started with a bowl of Pegasus, finished that up, moved on to good old Haunted Bookshop, and some black coffee. So, uh, so I got that surgery done on Thursday, which was great. I really appreciate all you guys uh, praying and well wishing and all that stuff. I mean, it was it really helped a lot. Uh, I was so comfortable going going into that operating room, you know, just knowing that I had uh, I had that kind of uh, support and a prayer network behind me. It just made the whole world a difference. Uh, surgery went perfectly. The surgeon actually said that it was textbook, which I guess is good. Uh, Unless he meant that it was so unusual that it would be called out in a textbook, you know, you never know. But, uh, no, he said it went fine. Um, I'm feeling, I'm st I've still got a surprising amount of pain. I did not think this was going to still be hurting as much as it does. And I don't want to sound like I'm whining about it. You know, it gets, it's not horrible, but, uh, you know, it just, it just does feel like a punch to the gut. And, uh. It's, it it kind of comes and goes. It's interesting, you know. It, 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 like right now, I don't feel too bad, and I'm taking some um, Celebrex for for the pain. So it's not like I'm you know on narcotics or anything, and that that seems to be okay. But at nighttime, when I lay down at night, it's really bad, and I I'm not exactly sure why because it's not bad in the morning when I get up and I'm lying down. Um, anyway. We're gonna gonna give it a couple more days. It should get a lot better, uh, and once it starts getting better, it'll get better very quickly. So I, I think we're we're over the hump, and we just got to get down the slope a little bit more. So, but but again, thank you for all the, the prayers, both going into the procedure and for for recovery. Um, they've meant the world to me. And all you guys that checked in with me, called me, sent me text messages, sent me emails. Uh, Checked in through comments on Instagram, everything. Boy, it's uh, I, I I didn't have a lot of time to think about what was happening uh, over the past couple of days because I had to spend so much time responding to those things, and that was wonderful. Yeah, you know, just took my mind off of it, and yeah, just good to know you got friends, which I knew anyway. But things like this can really sort of highlight it for you. So, recovery is probably going to be a bit slower than I had hoped, but that's okay. I'm down here today. Uh, I've probably spent maybe two hours total since Thursday down here. Um, just, you know, getting a few things, or I, I did take a meeting down here on, on Friday uh, just because it was convenient. I got everything set up over there for uh, for my day job so just convenient to sit down here but I have not touched a tool and I'm not planning on touching a tool for at least a um, another week so we'll see how things go and then it's going to be a slow ramp up it's funny the uh, my wife's with me this is Post surgery, the surgeon comes in to say, you know, all went well, and you know, here's your your release instructions. And my my wife is very protective, and she's got it in her mind that you know, it's funny. It kept getting longer. So on Thursday morning, she was telling me it was going to be four to six weeks before I could do anything. And I was saying, well, can't I just do some sanding? You know, pretty light sanding. No, 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 you know, that's jerking your body around. You can't do that. So, 
surgeon comes in and, and she says, uh, you know, he wants to start, <laughs> of course, it's immediately my fault. He wants to start sanding right away, which wasn't true. But, and the surgeon's like, sanding? What do you mean sanding? Says, well, he, he does woodworking, so at least she didn't say pipes. Uh, although I've had many surgeons say, oh, that's cool, I smoke cigars. So, uh, so, he, so the surgeon says, well, uh, sanding, that's not going to be a problem. It's, yeah, he can do that tomorrow. And she just was not having it, you know. She says, oh, "I don't think that's that's a good idea because of the, the jerking and all that." And I say, "It's okay, it's okay." And I, you know, I'm trying to get the two of them on the same page, and I'm saying, "I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to take at least a week off." And, and the surgeon just looks at me and says, "You do whatever she tells you to do. She knows what she's talking about." <laughs> so, doctor's orders. So we have an event coming up on February 11th, and I need some volunteers. Uh, this is going to be fun. We're going to be doing a, another live tasting like we did last year with Windjammer. But this time it's going to be uh, my friend Tim Fournier, who, who's, uh, I've interviewed him on, on, the, on Cane Rod Pipes Live. He's always in the live stream. Great guy. Really, really like Tim a lot. Uh, he has a blend that he's been smoking for years now. Uh, that he calls I Hate Roger Goodell. And we're going to be tasting this live. So, so far I've got one volunteer. I'd like to get maybe two more. So if you guys are interested in uh, joining us on February 11th at 8 o'clock, uh, we'll be doing a live tasting of this blend. Uh, get in touch with me. Send me an email at canerodpiper at gmail.com. I will send to you a sample of, uh, of Tim's blend and with, uh, you know, I'll, because we're all friends, I'll probably send a few other things along, uh, a, little, a couple of little goodies there. Uh, but the only catch is you have to be on a Google meetup on Friday. So we're going to, I'll send you the link. You just have to sit there. Uh, it'd be great if you could have your camera on. If you don't want to do that, if you're if you're somebody that doesn't want to be seen on on video, that's okay. You can turn the camera off and just do audio. We'll 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 live with it. But I'd, I'd prefer it if you had the camera on because it's just more fun that way. And uh, yeah, we'll all pack our bowls at the same time and uh, try out. I hate Roger Goodell. And maybe you don't hate Roger Goodell. Maybe maybe you're a Cowboys fan or a Patriots fan and you like how he doesn't enforce the regulations. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, you can call it IHRG and you don't have to worry about that. Uh, of course, if you do hate him and you're worried about having a tobacco with his name associated with it, you could also call it IHRG and that would be fine too. Anyway, I, I hope a couple more guys step forward because uh, this is going to be a lot of fun and it, the more the merrier as usual. But, you know, if it's just me, Tim, and this one other volunteer, we'll go with it. And we will have a big old time. Oh. Olive wood. Um, I bought some olive wood. Got one, one block here. Beautiful wood. Hopefully you can see them. That's the side I want to show you. Look at the grain in that. It's really gorgeous. I'm a, uh, I'm a grain nerd. That's one of the reasons I got into woodworking originally. Um, I'm the kind of guy that, like when I was building this workbench, I, I had pine and it was, it was knotty pine. And I was like, yeah, I want that knot right in the center because I like it. You know, I like seeing that. Uh, gives it character, gives it gives it warmth. Uh, so I love grain, and and olive wood's got some some, you know, not like briar, but very beautiful grain. Briar tends to be tighter, and the interesting thing about briar is, although it is a burl, um, the grain can be kind of planted. It is running in a particular direction. This, of course, is from a tree, and you know this is. Uh, don't actually know how this is cut, but you know I'm thinking this is somehow slabbed out. Um, 
I don't know what quarter sawn olive wood looks like, but it's probably not too far off that plane. Anyway, yeah. So uh, I like Briar. You know, you guys know that. I've talked before about Meerschaum. I'm I'm just not a fan of Meerschaum because one of the things I really like about Briar is that Briar changes over time. Briar breaks in, and Briar becomes magical after. 70 to 100 bowls go through a briar pipe and I just love that you know and Mearsham doesn't do that Mearsham in my experience doesn't change so I've never really enjoyed it uh, I can't remember the last time I smoked a corn cob pipe not that I don't like them I've got a lot of them I love them but I've got so many briar pipes it's just hard to pass up the briar. You know, it's hard to walk past the briar and get a corn cup. It's not hard to pick out this olive wood pipe though. I would have to say that olive wood is a close second to briar for me. It's um, This pipe has definitely changed over the years that I've smoked it. it uh, it's developed a character of its own. It loves burley, and you know I, I've heard other people say that about olive wood. I'm not sure why, because it you know it cakes up. It shouldn't be any real contribution of the wood to the flavor of the tobacco, but it just smokes burley wonderfully. So if you don't have an olive wood pipe and you think you'd like to have one, get in touch with Carl. Uh, he's Olive Wood Piper on YouTube and on Instagram. And uh, he makes beautiful pipes, very reasonable cost. Uh, I think you'll you'll be happy. And there's other folks that make them as well. It's interesting, I've seen some fairly high-end artisan makers using olive wood recently and in part I think that's because there's been some issues with getting briar at least uh, dry briar um, however I also see them doing things like playing with sandblasting and different finishing methods and I, I think they're just intrigued by the wood And I'm intrigued by the wood. So. The one thing I've been doing since I've been unable to actually do anything physical is I've been reading a lot about wood finishes and uh, you know how to treat grain in wood to to accentuate it. Um, different methods of finishing briar. Learning a lot about surface preparation. Uh, turns out it's, it's actually rather important, and I, I knew this, but I, I didn't know it in the detail that I know it now. Uh, you know, the grit that you sand to determines how deep your stain goes into the wood uh, within a limit. So very interesting stuff. and. You know, of course, there is no textbook source for briar. It just, it's this little niche market of guys making pipes and the information just has never been collected. And I guess part of that is because folks don't want it to be collected. You know, they, not, not that folks are, you know, but most pipe makers are very generous with information. It's, that's always been my experience. But there are things that, you spend a lot of time on, you know, you spend a lot of time investigating finishes and, and perfecting your sanding technique and things like that. So you probably are not going to just give that away. Um, you know, I saw one guy recently say, you know, if you come and visit me, I'll tell you anything you want to know, but I'm not going to just put on a message board something that I've worked for this hard and this long. And I understand that.
I have very few things that I have not shared related to pipe repair and restoration. One in particular I've, I've, I've shared with one other person uh, because it was, I don't want to get into it, but there, there's one technique that I use that only one other person knows about and he's been sworn to secrecy. Not because I'm afraid of competition or anything. It, it's it's a more complicated story than that. But I realized I can't tell the story or I'll give it away. So I should have just shut up. But, you know, there are some things that take time to figure out. Like stem making. Stem making is without question, it's an art form. And I don't say that because I consider myself an artist. I say it because I know how long it took me to get to the point where I think I can make okay stems. Um, there's a lot of details that you have to pay attention to. I think probably more so than most uh, pipe smokers really understand. Uh, and really need to understand. You, know, you don't. You don't need to know this stuff. But what makes it comfortable in your mouth? What uh, what makes a, a good clenching button versus a good sipping button? There, there's a difference. Yeah. So anyway. Got um, got a lot to do, and I can't do any of it. But we're we're in really good shape. I showed you the shop last week. I figured out where I'm going to put a few other things and open up some space. I'm going to move my wood lathe, and then I'm going to run the dust collection system because I I actually the dust collection system was over in this corner back when before I started doing the renovations. So that's been out of commission for a while now, which was fine because I haven't really been doing any woodworking. And when I use the little belt sander that I use for uh, stem making and stuff, I, I have a shop back that I hook up to it. And that's been the main, the main concern with dust. Uh, but I'd like to get the full dust collecting system back up. You know, I've got a cyclone separator and all that, which is, which is great. Uh, Probably just going to use the original ductwork. I'd thought about hard ducting it and stuff, but I, I think I'm just going to stick with the the flexible stuff. I know it's not ideal, but yeah, it's always worked before, so why change it? I got to paint. I got more more painting to do for sure. But the hope is I'm I'm probably within a month of having everything. Uh, back in a working state and then the rest of it is I don't want to say cosmetic because there's a lot of storage needs that I still need to address over on that side of the shop I haven't done anything over there I got a lot of waterproofing I need to do over there that's where the sump pump lives uh, and we need to have a new sump line out to the out to the street um, gotta get somebody to come in and dig that and grade it which will hopefully stop some of the moisture issues I've been having, which have been greatly, greatly reduced, but I'd like them to be reduced to zero so that I don't have to worry about rust and wood, wood uh, moisture and things like that. And part of what I think I'm going to do, and I haven't decided this yet, but that pegboard that used to be behind me back in the old days, back when I used to make videos over on that side of the shop. I don't know if I'm going to keep that. I like a pegboard, um, but as I'm looking at it now, most of the thing that it's holding that I need could be held on a much smaller pegboard and would probably be better held by a different, uh, different method. So I don't know. That's, uh, that's to be determined. 
but I'd like to clear that wall out so that I can put um, a wood rack system up and get some of my uh, wood stock up off the floor and you know hanging flat. I don't have that much. I usually buy it as I need it, but I'll often buy an extra board here and there. So I've got like a you know an ash, a board of ash, a board of walnut. You know, just just stuff some cherry. Probably about ten pieces total, and then all the little odds and ends that you that you acquire. But it'd be nice to have an off the floor storage for that. And then maybe just some more drawers. We'll see. That side of the shop will be hand tools. This side is all power tools. My table saw is in the middle. And I'm going to store my jointer and uh, my big, is that called a belt sander, surface sander? They're going to store behind the, between the workbench and the table saw because I don't use them that often and they're on rollers. So when I need them, I can roll them out, hook them up to the dust collecting system and, and go to town. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Can't do anything, so thinking about it a lot. So with that, folks, I'm going to probably call this to an end. Sneak back upstairs before my wife notices I'm missing. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday and looking forward to a great week ahead. Made quite a cloud there, didn't I? I hope you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.